Hey class, it's uh, Nick Sensky at UNC Charlotte, and uh, this is the second half of our rhinoceros tutorials uh, for our precedent study. Uh, this tutorial is going to cover taking your uh, three-dimensional rhino model and uh, manufacturing a uh, digitally fabricated formwork that we're going to use to pour uh, rockite. And uh, this graphic here gives you uh, some sense of the steps that are involved in this process. Uh, if you go ahead and look at our, our initial model, this is the one that I made in the last um, part of the tutorial. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a very clean, uh, kind of solid model. Um, you, can, uh, you can start with your model uh, as a solid, or you can also keep the pieces of your model around. Uh, it kind of depends on what your on what your mold is, like what techniques can work best for you. But uh, as part of your mold, you're, you're definitely going to want to convert it to a solid. Uh, so uh, anyway, it's good it's good just to have both versions of your of your clean model, um, so you can basically take it to the next step. Uh, what you have to do is you you really have to think about what kind of uh, formwork you need. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and just 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 look at my model in a ghosted view, because I actually have some things going on in this that, that are going to make it uh, not a straightforward uh, port. So if, if we look at our model, if you look at my model uh, from, the, from the side view, we see we have um, a lot of things to consider when we design our mold here. Uh, you know, again, rockite is going to be poured in from, you know, it's going to be poured in from one direction. We have to create positive forms in order to create negative space, such as this, uh, this uh, hole that's in the model. Uh, and negative forms to create positive space, such as this this column that's in the model. Um, and right away, I'm seeing something uh, that's going to cause me problems here. I, I can't do this in one pour because I would have this positive space that's actually going to run through and that's going to that's going to end here. And if I were to uh, pour around this, uh, it's basically going to create a lock here. Like I would have a positive form that's actually going to be impossible to remove. So right away, I know that I have to consider this as a separate uh, piece. But I know that there's a problem uh, with this as well, because again, I'm going to have a positive uh, form here, and you see how it actually tapers uh, outwards. Well, I've actually got this, uh, this uh, notch here. And uh, even if I, if I pour this upside down, right, this piece um, is going to get uh, stuck under this um, sort of like overhang uh, or like undercut and the same thing's going to happen here if I if I pour it from the top down my piece is going to get stuck coming out of this uh, flared piece of this so I'm kind of in a pickle here like I really have to design I really have to design my way out of it um, the other piece is going to be a little bit easier because if you notice you know if I if I flip this upside down shouldn't have any real difficulty uh, pouring to get this form. Uh, and in fact, this is the way that I'd, I would actually want to do it upside down. You have to really think about the direction that you do it too. So if I pour in, this is all going to fill up first, and then it's going to fill this up, and I'm going to have a nice flat top, and I should be able to pop that out. I don't have any undercuts. This is going to be free. Uh, that's going to that's gonna work really well. You just have to be really careful with the rock. You make sure that it gets all the way down in here and fills it. You probably want to shake that mold a little bit to make sure that that gets completely filled. Uh, but if I if I build this and pour this upside down, I shouldn't have um, any problem. Okay, so that, that one's fine. Uh, this one is going to take a little bit of surgery. Uh, and I think what I would do with this, I'm turn on project snap here. I'm just going to draw a line across it. And I'm going to split that. Yeah, and that should give me two, two pieces there. Okay, so that's my form, and uh, let me go ahead and just remove all this stuff here. So if I look at this now, um, again, I've split it. So what used to be a solid is not is not a solid anymore. Oh, by the way, this uh, incidentally uh, is a solid. To fix this, I'll just cap it. That gives me a nice closed surface. And this is kind of a bother. This piece of overhang is kind of left here. That's not, I don't want that. So I'm going to delete that and I'm going to cap this. So 
So now these are all solids. Remember, this is the stuff that I'm actually going to be uh, pouring. So I get I get these pieces, and when I put all these pieces together, that's going to give me my my uh, model back. Uh, so this one, uh, I'm going to flip this one upside down again. Again, but I'm going to flip this one upside down. Because that's how I want to pour it, right? I'm gonna I'm gonna pour it, and then this this cone's just gonna pop out as my negative space. This one doesn't matter what direction I pour it, because it's uh, the same in both directions, and that's not really uh, a big problem. So those are my pieces. Those are the three pieces that I'm gonna do. In this case, I'm privileging the pores uh, vertically, because uh, I've got this this kind of smooth sided uh, sort of like tapering column. The quarter inch uh, MDF is going to be an issue because it's going it's not going to allow me this smooth edge it's going to give me uh, kind of a stair step form if you wanted to to do something uh, smoother you could get a dowel or you know find some other means of, of basically putting the positive form in there in um, a smooth way you could also go to uh, eighth inch MDF it's going to give you uh, less of a stair step effect. It's still going to be kind of stair steppy, but the resolution will be better. Um, it's kind of difficult to do when you've got objects like this that are, that are rounded and smooth. Uh, in any case, you have to be very careful about uh, which side you privilege the pour. Uh, again, I'm privileging the vertical and uh, I'm pouring upside down. Um, you may need to pour uh, from the side in order to kind of get the resolution that you want. I've got another wrinkle in my model, and that's these uh, stairs here. These are actually eighth inch uh, stairs. They are not a uh, quarter inch uh, on our grid. So I'm gonna need some eighth inch uh, MDF or some other eighth inch material uh, with this model uh, anyway, if that's what I wanna do. Otherwise, I would have to redesign this just to accommodate a quarter inch module. Um, and I, I kinda don't want to though. I want the resolution of these stairs. They're gonna be fine because they're, they're attached to each other and I'm pouring it upside down. So I'm not afraid of losing that geometry or anything like that. I'm just gonna need to kind of um, adjust my strategy a bit. Uh, so uh, anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, talk about the next method, which is um, which is going to be uh, making our uh, our mold. So let's see here. These are on a uh, four inch uh, layout. So I know, I know that that's a four inch. I need about a half inch clearance on all sides. Uh, on, well, on, on, yeah, on all sides and the bottom in order to accommodate the, uh, the weight of the material. So I'm gonna do an offset of 0.5 inches and that's gonna give me uh, that. And then if I look at, oh shoot. It's not really aligned with this thing very well. Yeah, kind of, I gotta be kind of careful with this here. Oops. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna do that, and that's locked in. And then I'm gonna go ahead and copy. Actually, I'll do this. So I'm I'm creating the uh, boundaries of the former here. So I'm gonna say copy, move vertically. Yes, that's V. And um, what's nice about this is that. If I start here, I can vertically snap uh, to that in 3D, and that'll actually give me a really nice thing. And then what I need to do is actually, I'm gonna go ahead and move this down a uh, half inch. So R, because it's relative coordinates, zero, negative 0 There, so I've got a, a half inch clearance around all this. This is the top, which is where my material is gonna be poured. Uh, you can give yourself a, a lip if you want, like a little thing. I actually keep it pretty flat because I want I want, I want, want to be able to slick that off with a piece of cardboard or a piece of museum board, just like you would uh, to finish a piece of concrete. It's kind of what we're doing anyway, finishing concrete. So I've got my envelope for that and I'm gonna take and draw the box and the bo this box is gonna represent the actual formwork. And we're gonna Boolean that with our geometry, voila, to create our 
I need to get back on my layers here, to create our uh, formwork. So that is what our formwork is going to look like when we reassemble it uh, out of MDF. Okay, I think that it's pretty pretty straightforward. Now, I have the next part. Of, next thing I want to do is I actually want to make my uh, cut sheet for this. And to do that, uh, I can use a command called contour. So contour works like uh, sort of like a, it's, it's sort of like a topo tool. Uh, I select an object or objects, and then I pick. Uh, the, the corner of where I want to draw my contours from, I draw a perpendicular line, which is going to be the direction of where the contours are, are going to be drawn, and then I assign a distance for the contours. And the distance for, for these contours uh, is, is, is nominally uh, a quarter inch. That's, that's, what, they, that's what they typically are uh, for this. Uh, once you create these contours, I think it's really useful to go ahead and group them. So I got my contours, uh, my eighth inch contours in this match, but remember, I want a couple, uh, sorry, my, my, my quarter inch contours, I want a couple of eighth inch contours uh, up here. So, what I'm going to do is run another contour command. And uh, Mithil's contour is at uh, 125. In this case, though, I really don't need uh, all the contours. I just need those the top maybe three. So I'm going to go ahead and hide this, and I'm going to actually I only need the the, the middle two. I, I want to say so. Right. Actually, let's let's go ahead and move these side by side. So I, I can be I can be certain of what I need here. Yeah, I'm probably going to need. Oops, let me make sure I get all these selected. Yeah. There. Um, let's see here. So I don't. I just need the uh, the inside ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these other ones. And I think that ought to be just fine. And then I'll just move these into position here. using the project snap to avoid accidentally popping it into another layer. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so I've got I've got all those. Once I've got my contours, um, I'm going to go ahead and draw my cut sheet. So I can take a, uh, a rectangle. Uh, the laser cutter, depending on which one you're using, will take uh, 24. Uh, actually, let's do rectangle. Uh, do it here, and we'll do a 20, a 36 by 24. And I'm going to go ahead, since I know this is a 5 inch uh, box that I'm going to be working with, I'm going to go ahead, explode this, actually, wait, offset, uh, offset this a quarter inch, just, just to be safe, I don't want to go edge to edge. Laser is very precise, so I, I can I can do that. Uh, explode it, I'm going to offset it uh, a distance of 5 inches. And they just basically make uh, a grid for these things. That'll make it easier to kind of cut and paste these. Or copy them, I suppose. There. So I got some waste here, but whatever. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take these and move these on to my layout layer. Because I don't, I want to keep them separate. And uh, go ahead and change my windows here. And carefully. Uh, one at a time. Now, what I want to do is basically I'm going to build this from the bottom up. Uh, so I'll take this layer here. Oops. Oh, these are grouped, so I want to ungroup. Grab this bottom layer. I'm going to turn off project because actually these are moving in the Z axis. I want to snap them uh, to the um, to be flat on the X axis. So uh, I'm going to say move. And if you remember the bottom, oh, actually, that's uh, that said that was four crits. Let's go ahead and join these together, so that each one is actually one. Now you got to grab the entire layer because there's actually usually there's a couple of contours per layer. So we we'll go ahead and move this, and we're going to go ahead and move it to that layer. 
move this over here. Move this here. Here. Now, these are actually, uh, if I've done this right, you know, these are the eighth inch contours, and I'd probably want to put those um, on a different uh, sheet. So um, let's just kind of pretend here. We'll make this an eighth inch sheet of MDF. Obviously, you can get a lot of shapes on here, like a lot of uh, a lot of contours. So that that'll that'll be nice. Save some money here. Let me go ahead and um, turn off the layout here so I can keep these straight. Oops. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Now I'm going to keep, keep moving these here. Keep my procedure going. Oops. Made a little mistake there because I've been sort of copying these. So I'll keep my keep my stuff straight. So we'll just we'll move them. Okay, so this is my 8 inch board, and this is my, uh, sorry, yeah, and this is my quarter inch board. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and lay it off. Again, want to make sure that, you know, all of these are considered closed. They are. Um, this is this is what I wanted to uh, talk about. So I actually had some geometry. Let's go ahead and turn this back on so you guys can see what I'm talking about here. I had some geometry that's actually embedded inside of some other um, geometry like this actually wants to be uh, all one thing and so does this and so does that and so does that but because of the way that I modeled it which was not all like that precise um, let's go move these out of the way here uh, because of the way I modeled it I've actually got some some pieces that are that are kind of stuck in here and, and and so the the way that the the way that the contours came out you can see here so you can see it this is actually it looks like it's a separate piece than this main piece and what that ends up giving you is this contour that looks like something like this and uh, what I actually uh, what I actually want to do is I, is I is I want to actually trim that so that I get the edge that I want okay so you can see, you can see here. This is the uh, this is going to be the outer edge of the step, and then it's going to go down to this one. And it's going to go down to that one. So, so basically, what I what I need to do is just is just actually trim this inner edge uh, away, and actually need to do it a couple of these. So, yeah, that's it. So you can kind of see the double. Let me double check that that's what I intend to do. Oops, nope, that's the opposite of what I want to do. <laughs> I want to um, trim the outer edge. Always check your work. Okay. There, yeah, so it steps steps down like that. Okay. And then in this in this case too, I also want to trim uh, trim these away. Okay. And uh, let's see here. So solid. And actually I don't don't need this. Shouldn't need that there. 
think that that's actually the the last uh, row here. Let me see. Let me double check this. I don't actually need to join all these here. <coughs> so there's some element of um, kind of using the uh, the opportunity here to clean these, these up. Yeah, closed, closed. Let's just take let's just take a look and make sure I got this. All right. Yeah. I actually think I did this. So I'm actually going to get rid of that. Oh shoot. Let's see, it's three steps. Gotta make sure I do this right here. Yeah, one, two, third step is gonna be the yeah. So basically that last contour cut the top of this, but basically it's just a it's just a plinth. So um I'm gonna go ahead and um basically make it start creating this form. Okay, and I'll just join these together. All right, and make sure these are all joined. Okay, that seems pretty good. Okay. So that's the layout, the uh, quarter inch sheet, eighth inch sheet. Then the last thing I want to do with these before we uh, go in here is uh, I want to label them. We got to understand what order we want to build these in, right? I think that may make sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the uh, text tool. And we're going to draw, look look for the piece that um, has the closest edge because I want to pre pretty much put the uh, the text in the same place. I'm doing uh, Arial with uh, two, there should be kind of a mono font. Actually, let's just use Arial for now because uh, I know everybody has that. Um, there are some specialized fonts. I'm actually going to um, label these uh, uh, object object B uh, that I'm going to call this. Uh, actually, this is going to be object A, and we're going to call this A uh, A dot uh, eight because it's it's the eighth inch. So it's object one. Uh, I'm sorry, it's it's a sheet one of object A eighth scale. Whatever, however you want to code that uh, is up to you. But and I'm going to kind of move it. So this will be the label that we that we etch into it that's going to help us um, put them back together again. And you don't have to worry about your scheme, your naming scheme quite yet. Because here's what I'm going to do: I'm going to go back and rename it. So, so the the uh, the bottom one is actually going to be uh, 01A.8, uh, and then the next one's going to be 02A. Basically, just double click on this, and then you can quickly. This is the kind of thing that. Later on, we might script or something uh, to automate it, but in this case, it's pretty easy. So we're just going to go ahead and do the same thing. We're going to copy that label here. Remember that these two bottom pieces are actually pieces we cut because those are the bottoms of the base. And these are uh, O1A4. Actually, I should have put the four there before I copied it so many times. That was my mistake. Now I have to change more uh, numbers. That's kind of a pain. Sometimes planning ahead is really helpful. 04A04. Ah. 05. 06. 07. 08. And if you do this, you get your numbering right. You can cut, you know, your entire sheet, and then it's really easy to be able to put these back together again. Uh, and then the last thing I want to do is basically sort these out uh, by which ones we cut and which ones we score. If you guys remember from your laser orientation, the laser can uh, cut through material, or it can burn material, which can which can put labels on it. And of course, the labels are on the uh, score layer, and the other stuff in this case is going to be uh, on the cut layer. So let's hide everything that's not uh, part of our boards. And instead of selecting everything, let's select the cut. Let's, I'm just, sorry, let's select all the scores, which are the uh, letterings. And we'll do invert 
and we'll put all of those on our cut layer. All right, and we'll show, and then we'll put this back, and I'm gonna put the uh, boards on the uh, cut layer as well. And you, when you're ready to go, you can basically just save these, uh, or export selected, I suppose, and save that as your Rhino 5 uh, file. And that's what you can take into the lab with you. Um, and that'll, that'll pretty much work for you. So, so we've, we've separated things by cut and by score. Um, another thing that's kind of useful uh, that, that, that may, be, may be useful for you uh, is to um, take objects from each layer and if you if you want them to line up, like if you don't if you don't know um, where one thing should lay on top of another, you can always go ahead and copy uh, from one to the other, and then put that um, put that on a score layer. And so that way you know that this piece is supposed to fit here. You could this this one probably is easy because you you know that these edges are going to line up with these edges. But sometimes it's kind of nice to have those guides um, etched into um, the MDF here. And uh, that can be kind of useful. So if you manage manage your layers pretty well, uh, you can really make this build process uh, pretty pretty easy for yourself. Uh, so anyway, that's the uh, that's kind of how the process um, is supposed to work. You can see here this is actually what I would get. So you've got these um, these separate kind of contours here. And um, each piece is separate, and then these smaller ones, these eighth-inch ones, start to they they kind of they kind of start to pile up. And um, when I when I layer those together with some wood glue and some clamps, uh, I've got my formwork. Okay, same thing with these other ones. You can see here this is actually what happens when I do uh, an eighth-inch um, module. Sorry, uh, when I do a quarter-inch uh, module for this shape so that that contour is going to create that that um that output so you might go to an eighth inch or you might uh like i said do something with some other material in here like a like a dowel or um you know like some other piece uh that'll make that smooth for you um, this one actually seems to be pretty pretty good this this piece of it won't be too much of a problem uh and that's it so you can see what those other pieces look like i use the um um that kind of trick of copying one over and using the um, the scoring so that I can I, I, I can rebuild that uh, that shape pretty easily uh, and actually oh that's a really good one I missed this one should really know you know where the circle goes uh, on this so scoring that sheet is going to be really important okay so just think ahead like plan for this be as smart as you can. I know it's all kind of new for you guys, but if you understand the the principle of it and uh, you really imagine what the pour is going to be like, uh, you can eliminate a lot of problems for yourself. Okay. So if you guys have any questions, uh, let us know. Otherwise, uh, ho hope to see some really nice models this week. Thanks.